Hey everyone, I'm Chris, horror filmmaker and fanatic, here to explain how scary movies are. Today I'm going over Get Out, released in 2017, directed by Jordan Peele in his directorial debut. Get Out follows Chris, a photographer, joining his girlfriend Rose on a weekend getaway upstate to meet her wealthy parents, Missy and Dean. Their overly accommodating behavior may seem like nervous attempts to deal with their daughter's interracial relationship, but as the weekend progresses, disturbing discoveries suggest a darker truth. Made on a measly budget of $4.5 million, this movie made $200 155 million dollars at the box office, a smash hit. So profitable, in fact, that domestically, this film is the highest grossing debut film based on an original screenplay in Hollywood history, beating out the previous record holder, another horror film, Blair Witch Project. Rotten Tomatoes score of 98%, audience score of 86%. This film was also nominated for four Oscars, winning Best Original Screenplay for Jordan Peele. Now, everyone finds different things scary, so I'm going to be breaking down Get Out in four key fear categories. Thrills, grossness, shock value, and atmosphere. Now, if you haven't seen Get Out and you don't want the plot spoiled for you, I highly suggest skipping to this time code or using the chapter markers in the description. At that point in the video, I'll be given an overview of all the fear categories without giving away spoilers and then giving away my final recommendations. But if you have seen the film or you don't care about getting it spoiled for you, then let's go ahead and dive in and find out how scary is Get Out. First category, thrills. The exciting, jump scare, heart pumping scenes of a horror film. Get Out is rather tame, actually, in terms of the thrills. The, without a doubt, this film is a slow builder. Other than a handful of scenes and jump scares, one of which that always gets me is the running man, the grandpa running <laughs> at the camera, and also the really creepy scene of the maid where her true personality actually pops out for a second and then she's able to suppress it back. Most of this film is creepy and just building the tension as it goes along, until, of course, the cat's out of the bag and the secret is revealed. I've always really enjoyed the whole betrayal scene where uh, the family is cornering Chris and he's just yelling at Rose like, I need the keys now. And just that, you know, realization. Oh, okay. She was also betraying him. That that first time when I first watched, I was like, oh, damn, because I guess I didn't really think the girlfriend was betraying him. I don't know why she was upon rewatch. It's obvious that she's betraying him. But I remember the first time that whole betrayal scene really got to me. I was like, oh, my God. And it's also just cool where it's like she just kept playing up the game until she didn't need to anymore like she just kept going and it's uh it was it was really cool and then of course the entire ending is where the film really gets its thrills where all these points are coming into play especially chris escaping you know fighting all the different family members and the way that he defeats them i found out was really cool where it actually reflects their personalities the dad used to hunt deer so he's defeated by a buck the mom always hypnotized people and the whole like flash camera thing was always affecting their eyes so in a way like the sunken places through their eyes and she is killed by being stabbed in the eye the son always flaunted about how he was smart with jujitsu and thinking ahead but of course he is defeated by Chris thinking ahead jujitsu and then the girlfriend was a manipulator and betrayer and she is defeated by someone betraying her so yeah that whole ending sequence very thrilling I think the entire climax of get out is is really what sells it it's so satisfying and really where like the horror comes in and we will see that in the future categories like grossness this is all the blood gore disgusting stuff that your mom doesn't want to see get out is also pretty tame with the grossness. Just like the previous category, most of the grossness comes into play at the end with all of the violence. I mean, really, this film is pretty tame uh, for the most part. What I really appreciate about Get Out, though, is that it, on the surface, it feels kind of like a regular, maybe PG-13 tame horror film, but then at the end, it goes full on like slasher almost. Like Chris really gets his revenge and violently kills every family member. And that's really satisfying. I'm really glad that Jordan Peele decided to commit to that and just show the violence and just it's so vindicating as an audience member after you've grown to really despise these characters and feel like the whole world is really unfair to this poor guy and he finally just is able to let loose and go at it so yeah but of course the blood and gore you know well not much gore i think the surgery scene was actually uh pretty artfully handled it's mostly shown through the reflection of the dad's glasses but uh there is a couple shots where it actually shows full-on surgery which uh was pretty surprising but yeah, other than that it really just you know blood stuff like that it's uh that's really all other than that there's really nothing else gross about the film other than i guess just the creepy racial tendencies of all of the different wealthy white people just like preying on chris like he's an animal that that's kind of gross in a way but that's not yeah gross it's more like mm, so <laughs> yeah but uh, overall still rather tame with the grossness next category shock value the disturbing content the stuff where you thought oh whoa this film's gonna go there it's gonna show me some stuff get out is as well actually a rather tame on the shock value i think other than the entire twist 
twist of, oh, they are taking the brains and uh, parts of black people and putting it into these wealthy white people so that way they can, like, vicariously live through these bodies again. Like, uh, other than that, I think the shock value of the film isn't super shocking, I guess. Like, it's shocking that people are willing to do that or and are capable of doing it. I'm not really sure if it's actually realistic that that's possible in real life. I'm pretty sure there's a good amount of fantasy elements to it. The Sunken Place definitely is sort of a fantasy element, but also is kind of based on hypnotism and just, like, stuff that can happen to your brain when you mess with it too much. But yeah, really, it's just the whole surprise of just this family and these wealthy people do these horrible things to black people. And other than that, I think the shock value is still rather tame because you know you don't see horrific things happening you don't have really dark subject matter like a lot of other horror films dive into overall this film is staying in its lane with what it wants to tell and the topic itself is pretty shocking but in the grand scheme of horror it is not in the top tier but other than that i i will give the film credit for having some good shock in there and some good twists i i really love the twist of the girlfriend being bad that was really fun and then final category atmosphere the overall tone and feel of the film is is it scary? Is it spooky? This film has a solid atmosphere. I think this is its strongest category, especially in terms of fear. I think that this is the biggest way that people will feel fear in this film because overall the film is kind of more like a mystery thriller for the most part. There is a sort of a spooky, creepy element, but it's not really full on horror. Uh, the only times the horror comes into play is the random jump scares uh, that happen. Uh, I think actually, in my opinion, the scariest moment of the whole film is the guy running at the camera. That scene, the first time it popped up, like actually actually kind of freaked me out. I think it was also the music and just the image of just like, wait, why is this guy running towards me in the dark? This is scary. So yeah, other than that, uh, the atmosphere for this film is mostly just creepy and building up. And then the ending, while it goes full on horror, it's also like triumphant action horror because the main character turns into the killer in a way and he's fighting everyone. And, and that's really cool and satisfying. It's not like he's a victim running away from everyone. Oh, you know, like in the end, he's the, the force. So uh, in terms of the atmosphere, I think it has a solid creepy atmosphere. I don't necessarily think it's terrifying or scary, which is why I kind of leave it at the moderate higher level, uh, but definitely this film has a great creepy atmosphere to it. And so here's the overview of all the categories. So as you can see, atmosphere is the strongest part of this film. The creepy sort of uh, uncomfortable atmosphere that the film builds up, I think is its strongest point in terms of scaring its audience members. Uh, the grossness, the thrills, the shock value is all relatively low. There's still some there, you know, especially for horror. Like there's still gotta be something there. Otherwise, is it really a horror film? Pretty much all of these other categories really happen kind of at the same time. The film has a drastic shift in it later on. Uh, but for the most part, the film is really just going for a creepy, uncomfortable atmosphere. It's not necessarily trying to bah, scare you or terrify you. So my final takeaways with Get Out, I think Get Out is a solid horror flick. I think it is a really good film that not only creeps the audience members out and sort of shines a light on different topics that we're not used to in terms of social and racial commentary, but it has some great performances. I think Daniel Kalula, he has a great performance as someone who is just uncomfortable the whole film, but has to keep it hidden very well. I think it's a challenge for an actor to have to pull off like like hiding suppressed emotions, but in a way where the audience members can tell what they're thinking. A lot of times, especially in sitcoms, you know, characters, for example, who are lying, they have to really project it so that way the audience knows. But if you were actually in that moment as the other characters, you'd be like, this character is clearly hiding a secret. I think Daniel Kalula does a really great job of finding that balance where I can believe the other characters aren't onto him yet, but we as the audience know where he's thinking. My recommendations, I think this is one of the best first horror films that people can watch. I think that's part of the reason this film was so big, not only because of just the political commentary that was happening at the time, and Jordan Peele is really famous, but also it was just a solid film, and it was scary and spooky enough that people who weren't used to horror thought it was, you know, pretty terrifying. I personally don't find the film super scary. I do just enjoy its creepy atmosphere, but I think it is a solid starter for people who aren't used to horror. It doesn't go too far in certain categories like the grossness and shock value. It keeps it just uh, at the right level where people who aren't used to it can kind of just, you know, watch it, and they're, they're not too too freaked out by it. But I think it also has enough of those horror tropes that regular horror people will also enjoy it. And there you have it. That is how scary Get Out is. If you'd like to check out the film yourself, link in the description to rent the film. If you don't have access to any of those streaming services, because that's always changing, then that will be the rental place where you can check out the film. Comment below any other horror movies you would like me to go over, and thank you very much for watching. Bye.